Sneaky B. Back with some more JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. When we last left off, man, that's a nasty ass bug bite. Gonna need more than some hydrocortis over this shit. God damn. Hey, Doc, what do you think? Well, uh, it appears that your tumor has a mouth and teeth. And seems to be saying something racially derogatory towards the- oh! oh, God, he's dead. Oh, my God, this thing's such shit. I'm gonna eat your face. I'm gonna... Oh, no! Leading to Joseph having to run around town as this thing slowly metamorphosizes into a more deadly opponent. Even getting arms and just beating the shit out of the fuck. But that's okay, because Joseph is still Joseph Joestar, baby. And aside from his goofy catchphrase, he is also crafty AF. Using the power of his hermit purple to find a suitable location to smack this thing up, jamming it into some coal tar, hardening it, and then stretching it out to it. Man, it's ripped out heart. Next, you're gonna say, this is gonna hurt. Ah, this is gonna hurt. Bleh. Oh, and Whole Horse's love interest was the one responsible. Man, you sure not to pick him, Polner Ref. Ah! But the team hops into a car, and after picking up on again for some reason, what the hell are you doing here? They run to a bit of road rage when Knight Rider shows up and wants some freaking debt. With eventually this old beat up car turned into a roided out angry ass car stand that can literally dig through the earth and up into the air. Cliffs can't stop this thing. And this Wheel of Fortune has the ability to shoot out drops of gasoline so fast that they hit you like bullets. Lead to Jotaro getting his ass lit up and fuck, I think he's just fucking dead. Guess again. <laughs> Punch the shit out of this thing. <laughs> Freaking totaling his car and knocking out this weirdly proportioned man and leaving him to basically die in the desert. Yeah, good job, team. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I, I thought that the car one was just a fun one, honestly. And I loved the, the one with Joseph just because we finally get to see Joseph do something and, and show all the great Josephisms that I feel like we hadn't really seen much up till now. Not that Joseph was acting any different than he would normally, but it, it was more that we just hadn't had an episode that focused on him. And you guys even mentioned how like the powers that are here, his hermit purple, kind of suits Joseph best because Joseph has always just been a guy that kind of like wins by the skin of his teeth, right? Using what he has around him to his advantage. I mean, he's got a moan, obviously, but very rarely did he ever just like beat an enemy with just raw power, right? He had his, it's really about his wits. And that's what Hermit Purple kind of excels best at is using his advantage to his surroundings and hell even giving him the location he needs to go to basically find the thing he needs. Really damn cool. I like, like I've been saying, man, I'm, I am thoroughly fucking enjoying this part. I think it's fantastic so far. I am so like, so invested in it right now. Like, I do think that, I, I've seen people say this before, they, I've seen people say that they think Joseph is the best of the, the JoJo's, right? Or like one of the best. And he is, he's really fucking great. He was great in part two. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm one of the reasons why I was so happy to see him get, you know, screen time again is because he is so great, right? I'm, I'm glad we got that last episode. And I think I would say, personally, I probably, so far, like Joseph a bit more than Jotaro, but I also do like Jotaro. I'm liking him the more I see him. I think it's just hard not to like Joseph because he's just a fun dude, right? Jonathan was super serious, and Jodo is also pretty serious, but in a different way. Whereas Jonathan was earnest, Jodo is more kind of sundere, tries to act cool, but is really like a nerd underneath and kind of more like, honestly, a little bit like Cloud Strife in almost some ways. And Joseph's just kind of like life of the party, fun guy who uh, also isn't afraid to run the fuck away when shit is getting uh, too real. But I think what I like so much about part three is just the variety, the really, really clever ways that they do their fights and the solutions to them. Like it's giving me that feeling that I get from Hunter Hunter where I'm like, oh, it, it's making me think about it in a different way where it's not just me big, strong, me beat you. And they had that in part one and part two, right? There, there was that level of cleverness, but I think a lot of it really just kind of comes down to the stands, it, it, just their unique power set, like sort of limiting, but also expanding fights in ways that make them really interesting. Like the, the, the guy that bounced around between the, the light and the reflections, a literal car chasing him on the road, a, a weird tumor thing growing on Joseph's arm that he can't beat with a moan because that's his own power and it doesn't affect him. That like still kind of makes sense. And the fact that other characters aside from the Joe stars are getting focus here. 
Because that's the, that was definitely a big issue, I think, with one and two, where it just kind of felt like everyone else was just kind of along for the ride. It's really about the Joe Stars and, you know, their powers, and they're generally the ones kind of doing most of the work. I think it's also why Joseph is such a standout, you know, Joe Star in part two, is because it really is super focused around him. But there have been a lot of episodes here where Jonoro just has had barely any screen time. And I personally love that. I don't think that you need to have your main character, your, your titular protagonist always be the guy on screen at all times, you know? Always be the focus. I think this kind of storytelling is way more interesting. Otherwise, you end up falling into a Goku syndrome, right? Where everyone's just kind of like, you know, doing the best they can until Goku shows up to save the day. And hey, I'm saying that as someone who is a fan of Dragon Ball. Like, I'm not saying there can't be like, you know, some enjoyment out of, you know, the, the, the hero, the main guy that you're all rooting for and seeing him get crazy powerful and everything. But I think it, as I've gotten older, I've come to respect stories that really allow their side characters to flourish just as much as their main characters. Or the, I mean, may I should say my, the side uh, main characters, you know? It's because not like, I mean, Kakyoin and, and Avdol and Polnareff and Joseph are all main characters in this group here, but they're not the singular main character. They're not the Jotaro. They're not the part two Joseph or the part one Jonathan. But anyway, you guys let me some really interesting uh, little tidbits here and uh, specifically about how this part kind of came about. And someone who did a really good job of uh, discussing that was Prixto TNT, who last episode said, Hey Nico, now that we've been some episodes in this journey across the world and you've been enjoying it, I'd like to give a fun fact about how the idea of the story came to be. Basically, JoJo was struggling with popularity for years, with its editor having to defend it from cancellation various times. It wasn't until Part 3 that JoJo became insanely popular, and sometime before Araki started Part 3, Dragon Ball had a tournament arc and made the popularity of the tournament structure explode. Basically, every battle shown in manga was having one, and Araki was getting many suggestions to add a tournament arc to help him gain popularity. But while Araki enjoyed those stories, he felt that it wouldn't fit JoJo thematically. So after putting some thought into it, he came up with the idea of a journey in which the Crusaders constantly fight enemies, but the new enemy doesn't have to be stronger than the last one, avoiding tournament structure an inflationary increase in power, while also making the reader feel good about the story, progressing since the protagonist and his allies are constantly getting closer to their destination. It also helped that Iraqi's editor took him on a trip to Egypt sometime before serializing Part 3, which is something pretty neat. Iraqi actually went to most places the Crusaders go during the Part 3, Araki said that he believes that when depicting a real place, while tour guides and the internet, which didn't really exist as we know it when Part 3 keeps coming out, are good tools, you gotta see some things in real life. And that has remained true during this whole career, since Araki has traveled to many places of the world over the years only to search references for the places he depicts in JoJo. I really admire his dedication. Yeah, it is. It's it's really it's really quite enjoyable and very fascinating. I, I, I have enjoyed that idea of like globe trotting and seeing places i actually am someone who watches the amazing race race uh series rather religiously like i've seen most of the last like 20 seasons i'd say and it's awesome and part of the reason why i love it so much is because you do see all these different cultures and you get to a really nice sort of like vertical slice of life there and the different challenges are usually things related to the area in some way and it's just fun you know and i am really enjoying this journey that they're going on. They would go to this new place that has this new, you know, look at the culture there. And I actually like that the narrator like delves into it and talks about it in some ways. And, and they really go out of their way to make the scenery and setting look nice and everything. And I, I don't know, it just, it's it's really hidden with me. But that's, that's interesting that Araki would do something, he would decide to not do exactly what everyone else is doing. The thing has proven successful. And that I think is exactly why Jojo is such a, revolutionary kind of story and anime and why Rocky is like I said before I believe he's kind of a, a visionary is that he is the he's the kind of guy who sets trends himself he doesn't just follow along with everyone else he decides and comes up with his own ideas that he then makes popular it in itself so maybe the first parts took a while to define their footing even in Japan but once he got that, once he got that audience right now everyone's just hooked on this shit now we're on to what like part seven I mean, technically, I think the, the anime goes up, or maybe the anime only goes up to part six or seven, but he's up to like part nine in reality. It's like, it's, I mean, it's like you do this shit forever at this point. And I think it's really impressive. I think, I think the fact that someone could have a series going on for that long and come up that, and that he's able to come up with all these unique things that have had massive effects on uh, the entertainment industry uh, is really fucking cool. So, uh, Prixo, thank you so much for sharing that uh, really interesting tidbit behind 
this part as well as Rocky himself. Um, and it's for that reason you are coming today. By the way, I did see also some of you guys mentioned in regards to like my questions as to why part three is maybe not as popular. Like, and it, cause I was sort of surprised by that. I saw a lot of people say, oh, part two is my favorite. But then I see a lot of people lately kind of act like, oh, part three was like one of their least favorites. And it, it sort of confused me because I'm like, man, I kind of feel like, at least for me personally so far, this has been hitting really well. Like, I kind of like this more than part two so far even. And I think it's also some of you guys say that a lot of it has to do with how they changed the structure of this. The fact that this section is so long, so maybe some people feel it's kind of bloated out. I, I actually feel like the pacing isn't bad, but it could just be because I am watching this like two episodes at a time and maybe on a weekly basis. You know, if you had to wait one episode in between, maybe it would feel like, oh, come on, man. And I, that definitely can't affect things. I've had series where I felt that way for sure. I actually bleached was kind of like that, especially when reading a, a weekly chapter. For science, I feel like, motherfucker, nothing's happening for like weeks, it feels like. But if you just like binge through that shit, it's like, oh, it's actually pretty good. I, I've heard people say that. I'm like, I've been through all of this arc that I thought like, oh God, it was, it felt so dragged down and terrible. But then when you read all at once, it's actually not that bad. It feels pretty good. So I know that could be a part of it. And also apparently how it was sort of more episodic in nature and that every, you know, we're like going to new areas and there's always like a new bad guy or something. So it, it doesn't feel as maybe like there's much continuity. The thing is, I, I normally am not a huge fan of that either, but I feel like there is enough continuity here to still warrant it. Like we're still moving forward in our destination. We're still accounting for things that happened before, like a meeting of On or losing Avdol. It's not like everything reverts back to square one, like an episode of Seinfeld, you know, where you're just like, yeah, this episode could happen anywhere between like any other episode. I think it's a, basically to me, it feels like a nice balance of the episodic nature while also carrying on things and having people learn stuff. Like Polnareff just went through a huge character arc. Jotaro learned how to punch a car. <laughs> but I guess I could see that, how it's, that might turn some people off. I, I, I just saying myself personally, I'm, I'm so into this right now. And I actually kind of didn't think I would be just based on a, what a lot of people were saying about it. I, I was just starting to think, oh, maybe I'm going to go into this and be like, oh, this isn't as good as part two or something. But I, I'm pleasantly surprised that, that I, I feel the opposite. And again, I'm, but I do want to stress again, I, I think part two was great and it was a huge step up over part one. Like easily part one has definitely been the weakest one, but I don't, I'm not surprised by that either. Okay, before we move on here, we do need to uh, react to a few things for last episode. Uh, in Japanese, and a lot of those are re regards to Joseph and his oh no. So let's check them out real quick. Oh no! <laughs> it's so good. But we just point out too. I, I, maybe this was this was probably told to me before, but I I, I probably slipped my mind that uh, the guy that voices Joseph here in Japanese is also the same guy that did Heihachi. Oh man, I don't think I realized that. And that and I I, I did know that the Heihachi voice actor had passed away. It's why he's. It's part of the reason why he's not showing up in Tekken 8, aside from the fact that he also dies in Tekken 7. Oh, that's so sad. But he did such a great job. This both with Heihachi and the moments I've heard is in Japanese with Joseph here. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. The sad oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, finally, when Joseph predicts the line. Yeah. Ah, that's that good shit. Okay, and finally, uh, apparently a line that was hilarious that was in the Japanese dub that was completely cut out of the English dub, and that happens when uh, Jotaro catches fire. <laughs> oh my god. That's amazing, dude. <laughs> the fucking fourth wall break there. Part three ends here. Was that in the manga? Or did they just like ad lib that shit in there? Oh, that that is actually a shame they cut that out of the English dub. That's super funny. Maybe they thought it was too meta, but, <laughs> but come on, man. It's just already goofy. I'm finding a car. But all right, guys, uh, we're moving on to episode 14. We just got done beating up a car. I don't know if An's going to still be around. They said they're going to buy a ticket for her to go back to go to Hong Kong or something. So I don't know if she'll actually be still here or if she's peacing out. But we did see the old lady is coming in to fight us. So it seemingly she's going to be the last of the, these assassins. 
that have been asked after us, at least according to her. And I think she I think they showed that she was the justice, right? So let's see uh, how this shit goes. I wouldn't be surprised she's being actually like the most powerful of them all. All right, guys, episode 14. Let's get started. Oh, good. Yes, they're <laughs> thank God uh. they saw clothes, not just clothes in your size, Jotaro, but also clothes that include a giant chain hooked into the jacket and your very unique looking roundish shoulder pads. My, that looks quite good on you. I know it's almost like nothing changed. <laughs> Crazy the odds that you just had this out on the front line. I, I drove by the store and thought, oh, my God, that jacket was literally made for me. Here, take my weird Japanese money. See you. <laughs> See you, bitch. <laughs> that's, that's what you should have said out of the way. I'll see you, bitch. And don't you dare touch me there, you dirty. Hey, don't Here's say it like chicken. that. <laughs> don't say it like that. We've already been through some weird shit. Come on. Little girl, how, why are you not, like, scarred by all the weird shit that's been happening around us? Why do you want to stay with us when our lives are in danger at pretty much every episode? Forget this running away business and start heading home. Unless you decide to just suddenly develop a freaky stand of your own and you want to join us in an epic fighting action, then you get your little useless ass out of here, all right? And I mean that in the absolute nicest way possible. Fuck off. Uh, hmm? What's the matter? <gasps> She's looking for Jotaro. <laughs> All alone in this plane. Oh, God damn it. Why do I feel like something I'm being watched right now? Dude, is that propeller about to run into me? I'll be you Holy shit! Stupid plane. Just wrecked my new drip. You know, Barbie does almost wish they had cut out Avdala from the intro, only because it makes me sad every time I see it now. All right. Pakistan is a Here we go. Here in Pakistan. The people carry on the 5,000 year history of the Indian subcontinent. Cool. Episode 14, Justice Part 1. Oh boy, we got a two parter again. This old lady's gonna be a fucking bitch to handle, I bet. I'm impressed you got a Japanese school uniform made here in Pakistan. I know, seriously. How, like, what are the odds? The one tailor in this whole place, and we just happen to drive by it. I guess it, our luck is finally starting to look up. Haha. -ha. You know, because you said that, means we're likely all about to fucking die, right? Yeah, probably, but at least I look cool. It's one hell of a drop off the right side, and there's no guardrail anywhere. Probably shouldn't be going 90 miles per hour, but <laughs> you guys know me, I just like to live life on the edge. Yes, I fucking noticed! Let's find a place to stay in that town for the night. Holy shit. Looks like it's underwater, so much fog down there. Those are funny looking buildings they got. They look like little game board pieces. Stick out of the top. I just couldn't get used to the really strange toilets they have all over India and the Middle East. Oh, hey. oh, interesting. But that feels like that. Sorry, now I'm just like, wouldn't they have had those kind of toilets in France, though? Or is that not as actually as popular there? Because this is it. This is, the, this is the squatty one. I, by the way, actually have used a pot potty like that before. I used it when I was visiting the Vatican. I shit you not. They had a, at, at least when I was back when I was visiting that probably like 20 years ago now at the Vatican, they had like they didn't have any regular toilets. All the toilets that you, you had to go numero dos on had uh, were like squatty ones. I kind of figured that would also be the pretty common one in France, though, too. But hey, what do I know? The hell was that? Wait, go back. What was that? Can tell to figure out what it is. Is that a, oh, it's a, is that a dog? Ah, oh, come on. What the hell? We're trying to like get a record of how many dogs we can kill in one part? Jesus. A dead dog? What's the matter, Jotaro? Oh, sorry. I'm just reminded that we're still in a Jojo anime. Really? You had to be reminded of that. Yeah, you know, so I, just, I forget. How the fuck can you forget that? Look at you. Look at me. Look at that dog over there. Is anywhere in this country safe? Truly. Hey, this is a nice little town, don't you think? A nice town? Really? Can you see any of it? Let's ask about a hotel at that restaurant over there. Called Restaurant. Fuck, like we just entered place. Silent Hill. Assalam alaikum. Assalam alaikum? This man seems very unamused by that, Joseph. <laughs> Come on. Everybody likes me. But your pronunciation was rough. See, okay? Did he suffer a stroke? I do not know. Huh? Good day. Oh, he can't talk. Ew! He's got fucking roaches on him, bro! This may not bathe. Never talk to me or my bugs again. Do you know any of that? Oh, he seems fine. Uh, uh, oh, God, geckos are living in there. Ah, uh, God, I hate when that happens. God damn intestinal geckos. I was coming in and eating my breakfast and then pissing off. He's dead with that look of fear on his face. Or constipation, one of those. I, I, I can't tell. A heart attack? A stroke? An enemy, say it! Say it! Somebody say it! If you're not gonna say it, I'm gonna say it! Wait a minute, this guy's holding a gun! You just noticed? <laughs> 
shots. A literal smoking gun. He shot himself? No, I doubt it. His body doesn't seem to have any visible wounds, and there's no blood anywhere. Yeah. His face is all twisted? Like eh. he's his tongue's out, because you always gotta have tongues out in this part. No tongue is safe in part three. Ooh, ma'am, you wanna get that looked at. That is a, uh, that's some nasty dander if you got fucking flakes coming down on your face there. Uh, yeah. Ew. My boils seem to be festering today. <laughs> oh, 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 God. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh. You just fucking. Uh, I, think I, I think I understand why this guy wanted to die now. Oh, man. Stop scratching it. Stop. 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 Look at that baby. Look at that baby in his face. He's like, Mommy, I hope when I grow up, I get boils on my face just like yours. Mm. Yes, honey, you will. Don't worry. We all will. They are so itchy. So terribly itchy. This town seems normal. Yep, nothing unusual going on here. What is with the people in this town? There's a man lying dead in the street. Eh, I have a very itchy spot right between my buttocks, but I'm not going to scratch it because the itch feels kind of nice, actually. Mm, yeah. Ooh, the longer I don't itch it, the more painful it gets. Uh, that's the stuff. Yeah. What the fuck? This town's fucking weird. I'm out of here, bitch. Hey, look at that dog. That dog. Wait, is that the dog I came across that was dead earlier? Oh, God! This, call me crazy, but doesn't that part there look like a skull? Yeah, no, that's uh, just an optical illusion, surely. Whoa. You don't think it could be the work of another stand user, do you? I don't know, Jotaro. What do you fucking think? Given our track record, is that even a question that needs to be asked? I don't know, man. I was just like, you know, throwing that out there. It could have been something else. Could be like, what? Could be what? Um, uh, a uh, hurricane? A hurricane. You think a hurricane is responsible? Maybe this one guy dead. That lady at boils. The dog dog coming back to life. Fog covering this town, and they're being nary a sound for fucking miles. Listen, I'm just trying to come up with it. You're trying, but you're failing. Next time you have a thought, Jotaro, just let it go. <sighs> Fine. Why would someone who's after us kill a man who has nothing to do with us before we even got here? Dude, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have already died. I mean, what was up with the other dude? Stealing other people's tongues. Why was he doing that? He just liked tongues. Maybe this guy likes sticking geckos in people and cockroaches. Let's examine the body before the police come. Try not to touch it. I'm going to touch it. Stop. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Are you supposed to be the adult around here? He has bus and train tickets in his pocket. Free money. He's got a gaping hole here right in his upper chest. And weirdly clean, too. With a fatal chest wound this big, there should be blood gushing everywhere. Ugh. Looks like hollow. Oh, God. The trypophobia is kicking in <laughs> for probably some people. Ugh. It's like all hollowed out or something. He's like that cartoon cheese you see on Tom and Jerry. Yeah, Swiss. Come on, Paul. Are you really French? I don't start to think you're not, all right? France is literally the, the birthplace of crazy cheeses. I mean, granted, Sw Swiss would probably would have come from Switzerland, but shut up, shut up. That doesn't matter. That matter. Everyone, get in the car. We're leaving this town. <laughs> Joseph, what are you doing, dude? Guys, check this out. Look how I get in the car. Woo! Old man, is that necessary? Hell yeah, it is. Watch me do a full 360, Jotaro. What the? What the? See, good thing I came out at the single. Otherwise, I'd be fucked up. Ah! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> nice save there, Joseph. Ah. Oh, God. Ow. What in the hell are you doing? <laughs> Stop goofing around. You're crazy. Oh, no. Oh, no, again. <gasps> oh, God. She's here. Crazy old lady Rita Repulsa. But I guess point out that the reason last episode why she got all those uh, holes on her uh, was because of her connection to her son. Just as like, there's like this bloodline connection, right? With uh, Joseph and Jotaro to now Jonathan's body on Dio. Similarly, there's like this connection from Stan users of mother and son where like her, his wounds affected her. So I see. I'm afraid with this fog, it's dangerous to leave the town now. There are many cliffs, you know. I don't know, this old lady looks sus, guys. I think we should just go ahead and kill her. What? Yeah, just kill your ass. You're the sand user, aren't you? No, I don't know what that is. Don't you lie to me, I'm gonna kill you right here. I'm gonna stop this from being a two-parter right now. We've actually met a normal person for once. Yes. 
completely normal. Let's hear that sound effect one more time. We've actually met a normal person for once. Duh. <laughs> one more time. Duh. The stand user is hiding somewhere in this town. With this fog, there's no telling what our enemy could do. They could be next to us and we wouldn't know. Yeah, we're literally right next to us. Come on, this way, Master Joe Star. God, the ugliest one of all is that old lady too. Hey, I'm the new one here, guys, remember? Fuck. 20 years ago, one of the 007 movies was filmed here. What? One of the 007 movies? Uh... How old is James Bond's movies? Do they actually come out before, like, 87 before? I, they are really old. Sean Connery? <laughs> Sorry, that was just... Was so, I was not ready for that that reference there. Was that actually what it said in the, the Japanese one, too? And when John Lennon of the Beatles visited the country, oh! he spent the entire time in our little hotel. John Lennon! I mean, John Lennon's dead, so I guess I can get away with referencing him, right? Well, I was just pulling your leg, young man. Oh. <laughs> Before, you called me Joe Stark, didn't you? <laughs> How did you know my name? Oh. Did she, though? She. I don't think she did. I think Joe's, that's why Joseph's looking at him like, but I don't think she did. He's he's doing the same thing he did before. Where he's making up a lie on the spot to try to see if he can, if he can catch them. Because he's suspicious. That delightful young man next to you said Mr. Joe Star earlier. I may be old, but my ears still work. You mean me? Did she say that? Anyway, hold on. I, I need, now I need to go back and listen again. This way, Master Joe Star. Oh, wait, she did. Never mind. I I, I totally missed that. Joe was really pick, quick to pick up on, like, shit going wrong, right? Same thing with, like, yellow temperance. I mean, granted, that guy was actually, like, a fucking psycho anyway. But he definitely, I feel like out of the group, he's definitely the one that sort of, like, notices when people are, like, not who they say they are. I just noticed the bandages. What happened to your hand? A minor burn, nothing more. I suppose it's just my old age. Also, there was a point where my face exploded, but let's not worry about that. What do you say you and I get dinner alone? Whoa, Polar F. Oh, wow. Damn, Polar F. Polar F just doesn't discriminate, dude. Young ladies, milfs, gilfs, great gilfs, Polner F will love them all. You know what? I respect that, Polner F. I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> We're all laughing and having a good time. I'll make you suffer a pain 1,000 times worse than what my son endured. Then I'll cut off your dick and rip out your guts. <laughs> what the fucking shit? <laughs> cut off your dick and rip out your gut. Wow, lady. Damn. Fuck. She knows how to hit where it hurts. Fucking Jesus. It's always the dick with you people. What, did I write this script or something? This looks like a temple and tomb raider. What the fuck? My autograph's worth as much as Lennon's. Here. I'm Paul yes. Nareff, after all. Paul Nareff. <laughs> was that... Was that him, like, saying, like, Paul McCartney? Or <laughs> Just the way he said that was kind of funny. He didn't say Paul Nareff. He said Paul Nareff. Okay, what weird shit are we going to find in here? <sighs> Ah, uh, yeah, smells like death in this bed. And I got a TV in here. <laughs> like, I saw this old ass shit in here, and then there's randomly a CRT. I don't think it's functional. If that's the case, I won't be able to use Hermit Purple to get info on the enemy. Oh, I was about to say, I'm like, can we, like, just go watch Dio naked again? Why the hell would I do that? You know, for, for, for research purposes or something. Why, why are you looking at me like that? Looks like my room doesn't have a bathroom. Is there one in here I can use? Perhaps the bathroom here is communal. Ah, of course. He's so carefree. Good grief. Good Stay. grief. Yari Yari Dazay, bitch. Is that whole horse? Oh, fuck, I think it is. He's back. The Joe Star party is on the third floor. Oh, my God. Wow, he did come back again. Hey, I'm, I'm actually glad because, I mean, he's a piece of shit, right? But I did like his character. And I, I was hoping we'd, it wouldn't just be like, oh, he just disappears for the rest of the series. I didn't think you'd come all the way out here yourself. <laughs> oh, God, she's Miyazaki crying. God, Lord. Anyone notice that when people cry in Miyazaki movies, it's always just like, like eyes, nose, mouth, it's all everything. All, all the holes just blah. <laughs> oh, it's funny. I, I'm so stupid. I don't even re realize that. She's literally tying up her, her left hand to hide the right hand. So they don't see that she has two right hands. I don't know why it took me that long to realize that. For some reason, I thought it was like related to the injury she suffered earlier when she exploded. It is so wonderful to finally see you. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, okay. By the way, your son's kind of weirdo, but whatever. You and my son were friends, were you not, whole horse? Uh, 
Sure. <laughs> yes, we're thick as thieves, ma'am. <laughs> He's like, he knows. D just, just go with it, man. Just go with it. You aren't acting like yourself at all in Yaba. Ooh. Oh, no. She might actually turn on and be like, then how did you let him die? Uh-oh. Wait. Will you avenge him? Is that why you're here? Yes, that's exactly it. Oh, okay. Maybe not. I'm going to make sure those bastards pay for killing my best friend. Exactly what I want to hear. Oh, what the fuck? I don't understand, dude. Because now I can kill you too, you filthy traitor. What the fuck, dude? Listen, man, horse is a piece of shit. He killed best bro Abdul, but he wasn't responsible for your son's death. I didn't even churn on him. Your son went too far ahead, you dumb old lady. God, ow. Ah, ah. Ah, ooh. Ugh. Ah. Oh my god, Lenny's crazy! You're as unforgivable as that bastard polar ref! Damn, Lenny, why don't you just use this guy to fucking help kill these dudes? Then you kill him! Fucking Hiller, this is like your first time being a bad guy? Come on, you gotta think like two more steps ahead, you crazy psycho fuck! I'll have you die at the hands of my stand, Justice! Whoa! Justice! is coming. Ow. Ow. Well, that's how that happened to that other guy. This is justice. A stand that's made of fog. Any wound my stand happens to graze becomes a gaming hole and... Oh, my, she's... What the fuck? Her actual stand is using fog to hurt people? Ow. What the hell? You will die by your own... Oh, man! Fucking eat that fist, whole horse! He's eating that whole horse fist! Oh, oh shit. Oh! Justice prevails. Fucking justice. Damn. Well, so much for whole horse showing up and getting to do much of anything. Huh? Sounded like a giant explosion. Sound like some dumbass shooting himself in the face. Better go check it out. We heard something strange and came to investigate. Same here. I'm just walking very slowly, like as slowly as humanly possible. Your time's finally come, Polnareff. To be continued. Wow. Damn, they really, <laughs> they really ended that one on a cliffhanger. But good thing we don't have to wait long at all. We'll see where things go uh, in episode 15. Let's get started, guys. All right, episode 15, Justice Part 2. So horse is just still lying on the ground over there. Yeah, sure is. Oh, madame, are you here? Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Clementine. Oh, God, his singing is even worse than his hair. God. Ah. I don't know how the hell she got that body out of there so fast. Oh, what happened? Uh, what? Dude, how are you not seeing the guy over there? You did wait, hold on. He literally walked in the room. Like, he's looking straight in the room. Should he see the body? Like, it's literally just to the right of him. And I mean, like, I get what's going on. Like, the, the body is still there. And she just like, as he walks in the room, she falls over to make him look over to the left. But like, peripheral vision, bro. It's like, I think his eyes will be immediately drawn to like, like especially when we see at this angle here. Look, <laughs> he's right there. He's not that far from the entrance of the door. Even if you were looking straight in, I feel like you would see him immediately. Ah, oh, whatever. No, just look at the old lady over there. Fuck that guy. I'm fine. No problem, I promise. Get out, get out, get out! Who <laughs> get out, get out, get out! <laughs> That's right, use your weird creepy fog farts. Oh, oh, oh. oh, there you go. When the time is right, I'll kill you just like I killed that bastard whole horse. wonder why she killed the uh, that random dude outside then. So it's interesting, like, it seems like she has to form the hole, though, for it to work, right? And it also seemed like it basically took, like, a, a wound that was already inflicted. I don't know if, it, if she could just take the fog and just, like, shoot at them normally and full of, fill them full of holes. It takes is just a tiny little wound, and then you're yeah. finished. I'll turn you into my very own puppet of justice. Yeah, there we go. Immediately have that answered. Yep, need some kind of wound, something first. So what did, what did that other guy have to have that many holes? Did she like stab him that many times or he had just like some pimples or something? Oh, cool. <laughs> Ooh, cool, a stick. Or maybe it's a magic wand. Woo! So I was wondering, are you running the entire hotel all by yourself? Don't you have some family around to help? Like a son? No, don't say that. Don't mention that, Boulder F. I've gotten used to living alone. Sounds lonely to me. I wonder who the, I think about it, I wonder who the father would be. 
We know her, but I don't think we know actually who the who would be the, the man providing the sperm in this situation? Oh God, it wasn't Dio, was it? Oh my God, are you fucking kidding me? Please, I have standards, you know. Okay, okay, sorry, Jesus. Just think, life with a son and daughter-in-law. <sighs> if you had a son, he'd probably be older than me, right? Hey, what's the matter? <laughs> Or just knows just the fucking wrong things to say. Did you have a son who moved away or something? <laughs> he passed away. That was terribly insensitive of me. You're the one who killed him, you monster. I just <laughs> I'll give you a nice back rub. I know how it feels to be alone. I lost my mom when I was still just a kid. Oh, this is amazing, dude. This is so funny. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. Paul Dorf is so great, man. God damn. What a great character he is. You can think about me <laughs> as if I'm your own beloved son. <laughs> oh Ask my me god. For anything. Okay. <gasps> okay. You love me, don't you, little lady? Yes, you do. <laughs> wow, you're really tense. I wow, you're really branching those scissors very intensely. You must want me to give you a haircut. Well, okay. Snip, snip, snip. <laughs> <gasps> He's alive. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. Dude, did you shoot some of the head? You know, like you literally did to Abdul and he's fucking dead. How is he still alive? It's a really good question. That miscreant must have made his stand vanish as soon as it shot the bullet into his mouth. Oh. Look behind you, Paul Ref. Behind you, you fool. Oh, now, now he's actually like, fuck it. I wasn't so late to lose. What are you doing? Ah! What the hell? Oh, God, the townspeople. You were dead when we got here. Yeah, so they're all being like, so everyone's dead, literally, including, I mean, the dog we saw before. They're all being puppeted with the fog in them. Oh, man, that's fucking fucked up. Yeah, look at this shit. Yeah, look at my gaping holes. Holy shit, we've got zombies. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. We got fucking zombies in this part, too. Wow, I thought we were done with that. Ew, zombie baby too? Ah, oh, stop. Can transform the dead into my personal army. Oh, yeah, it's funny. The, he's actually also got two red hands. The the justice thing. Well, how about that? Dead. Oh, God, the tugs again. It's always the tugs. I'm out of here. Oh, 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 screw this. Pull the rug. Don't leave me here, please. Oh, shut up. Fuck you, dude. You killed Abdul. You're still on my shit list. You're on your own, pal. <laughs> I'll crush your balls till they pop. Always the dick and balls. Damn, this only is fast. Take this. Oh. I'm so far away from them now. Mr. Joestar and the others will never hear me. So we're in a fucking Resident Evil game here. If I get even a single scratch, I'll be in trouble. She'll take control of me just like Hall Horse. I wonder if it's a scratch that has to be inflicted by her or if it's just any scratch. Because if it's any scratch, man, it's a good thing we didn't have any uh, wounds still left over from those uh, previous fights at this point. Why don't we heal so fast? <laughs> I'll hide in this room. Wait a minute. Oh, come on. Did I run into another bathroom? <laughs> Bar, what is it with you and toilets, bro? Damn it. The toilet is so dirty. Ew. Well, this is not a pig down there. What's going on? Now it's totally quiet out there. What the hell are they doing? Damn it. Oh, this anticipation. Now I really actually gotta take a shit. Uh, I think there's a toilet here. But, but if I take a shit, they might hear me shit. Oh, shit. Ah. Oh, no. Don't do it. Don't look. Don't look. Ah! What the hell? Oh, shit. Fuck, he got hit on his tongue. Ah! It's always the tongue. The bastard stabbed me in the tongue. Oh, that's a really, that's a really bad place. Oh, dude. Ow. Tongue piercing. Oh, man. Oh, that sucks. Where the fuck is Jotaro and Joseph and Kakyo and Fuck? Hey, old horse. How about we have you clean the bathroom, eh? Oh, no. Uh, lady, can you just kill me? I really prefer you just kill me and not do what you're about to do now. Oh, that's so, so fucked. Yeah, yeah, lick it. Do it. Lick the toilet bowl clean, Bowler F. Like this. <laughs> then come over here and lick my butthole to it's clean too. <laughs> God damn it. I got that. I don't want to do that for a while. Anything but that. <laughs> <laughs> the anticipation is killing me. 
<gasps> hey, Jedro's there. Or I feel like someone's about to eat shit, literally. What can I do for you? Wait, so you guys weren't attacked by zombies? Maybe you didn't hear me because you were too busy doing something else. I wonder what. Oh, hell yeah. Jedro's just like, fuck this. I, you're crazy. I know it. Just die. I wonder if Polnareff ended up having to lick on that toilet after all. Uh, all right, see the stats on this thing. Justice and Anyaba. So his power is only a D, which I guess makes sense. It's kind of like not inflicting the wounds. It's just taking a wound and making it worse. Uh, its speed isn't that great. It's slow ass fog. Its range is huge. That makes sense. Durability also huge because it's fog. Precision is low for some reason, and I feel like that probably doesn't feel right. And potential is also pretty low. Can't become anything more than just mere fog. Jotaro has no idea. A tiny scratch will spell his doom. Oh good, looks like he did not lick the toilet. I do not see feces anywhere around his tongue. Oh, all right, good. He's in the bathroom, but he's been in there for quite some time. Of course he's taking a shit. <laughs> the bathroom is at the very end of the uh... hall. What an incompetent fool. Oh yeah, I forgot. You have a second? I got a question. Oh! <laughs> oh! You should be more careful. That was too close. Yeah, could have been real bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is... Oh man, Jenner is pretty funny, cool dude. <laughs> Yeah, you should watch where you walk in, lady. I like it's just like the sudden reversal of like control here, right? Where Polarev is just playing, he just is like this oblivious, big, dumb idiot. And Jenner's just over here, just like knows, like he just seemingly already knows everything that's happening. You're pretty damn lucky. Like, is he unaware or is he playing dumb? Even us, the viewers, don't quite know. But the way he's talking sounds sort of like, ah! Sorry to ask before you even get up, but I have a few more questions. First on the list, how did you know my name is Jotaro? I uh -huh. never told you my name. No one has. Not since we got here. <laughs> this is so good, dude. You wrote your name in the guest book earlier. Don't tell me you don't remember. No, I didn't, actually. I wrote a fake name, you dumb, wrinkly bitch. <laughs> you just say some shit like that. This guest book here? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Kill Taro Kujo? <laughs> so cool, dude. Oh, dude. Dude. Okay. Okay. Jotaro's kind of gone up even a few more notches than before. Like, whereas, like, Joseph is like a kind of wily, like, cleverness, right? Jotaro is a cool, like, intelligence. But. He's clearly taking after Joseph a bit, because that, that similarly is clearly thinking like two steps ahead. The jig is up. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 yes! Take that, you dumb zombie bitches. Go back to being dead. I'm gonna punch this old lady now. Ah! Oh god, the zombie baby. Ew. That's mega fucked up, lady. Is he more fucked up than the dog? Jesus. Come on. You've fallen into my trap, Jotaro. <laughs> You've fallen for my trap car, Jotaro. Jotaro, it's me, Whole Horse, remember? No, I, I wasn't really much, I wasn't really a part of that arc very much. We we're just kind of like wandering around the city. Punch the fog. Or cut the fog with your sword or shoot it with a gun, I don't think so. Maybe we should just go for the old lady then, like we did with her yellow temperance. I'm gonna have you kick yourself in the nuts, Jotaro. God, it's always the nuts with you. Quick, run away, Jotaro. Good grief. I don't know <gasps> how to run. What? Before that old hag takes another breath, I'll defeat that stand and send her pack in. Oh, fuck, huh? the music's kicking in. Let's do it. <laughs> what? She can't breathe? Oh, he's sucking. Sucking in her entire stand. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> wow, lungs of steel. Damn. Dude, is there nothing Star Platinum can't do? No wonder he's got A's across the board on his stats. <laughs> what do you mean, what have I been licking? You ask such stupid questions. I honestly don't see why that matters. <laughs> oh no, did he actually? Oh no, maybe he did actually lick the toilet. Fuck! The toilet. <laughs> the toilet. Now I need to disinfect my tongue, okay? Oh god, he did. Oh, never mind. Oh, that sucks, bro. <laughs> What are you giggling about? <laughs> I already knew about that, but I could resist picking on him about this first. <laughs> Hold on. Jotaro already told you what happened, didn't he? You guys suck. You have an idea what it's like to eat ass like that. Well, actually, I have occasionally liked to- No, stop. Don't answer that question. Ahem. 
toilet. Toilet. Man, you licked it real good. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, come outside. Once you guys are done licking ass, step outside. Whoa. <laughs> Graveyard. So the whole time we were here, we were talking to some corpses six feet under? It was a literal ghost town. All we are is dust in the wind. Seriously, look at these stats. No wonder this motherfucker's so cracked out of his mind. He's got like an answer for every situation. We need to know how many more stand users are out there. Oh. Well, did we beat them on that like the last one? She said that was like the last, she was technically like the last of her assassins left. I highly doubt she'll be willing to share that information though. We just need to use my hermit purple. It's also her stand like literally stuck inside Star Platinum right now. Is it gonna remain there? Is he gonna spit it out? Do we have anything to worry about in that regard? Whole horse, you slide ball! Oh, for God's sakes. Whole horse gets away again. See ya! Whoa, that car's bouncing. You better put a bullet between that old lady's eyes real soon, or else you'll find out just how terrifying Dio really is. Uh-oh. There's maybe more going on there after all. All right, guys. That was a good one. I, I liked the just the whole creepy nature of that as well. I, just as well as Polnareff's like... Being so oblivious, it was hilarious. And I, I also like Jotaro fi figuring out, uh, basically, just like figuring out what the old lady was actually up to. I will say I'm a little confused on Star Platinum's power set, though. I am sort of like, okay, so he had the he has the ability to just, you know, I mean, obviously punch a lot, right? His like cr and like incredible strength, but he can also un elongate his fingers and also just like suck up, like. So his opponents are like a bunch of air. I mean, I, I guess that kind of makes sense. That's just like an act of endurance, right? I mean, he's like the most humanoid out of all of the uh, the stands we've really come across here, you know? He's just like a really buff dude. The long game fingers thing I'm not really sure about. I remember seeing people say before, I was like, yes, this, it's that time that Jotaro pointed so hard that his enemies died. <laughs> Pretty funny. I don't know. I'm guessing there's some consistency to it, and maybe that's... So I think it's something we still have yet to figure out. I think it's kind of the point, right? That's why the potential for him is an A, because there's, like, seemingly this, like, understanding about even his own stand that, that I don't think even Jotaro knows yet. It'll probably become clearer the further we go in. Uh, but anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If it did, please leave a like and a favorite. And subscribe if you're not already become a picky penguin. Aboard the SLP. Where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy!